Commercial to residential conversion deals should yield you a return in excess of 30%. In this video, we're going to take you through a deal that's been done in Richmond, Southwest London, which delivers exactly that figure. It's a relatively textbook deal where we take a shop and put a flat in the back. To find out more about this deal and how you can do deals like this too, stay tuned. So one of the most textbook permitted development deals that you can do is to take a large uh, deep shop and to make a flat or a number of flats at the back and retain a smaller shop at the front. We showcased one of our students, Kieran Gill, who did a deal exactly like this in West Ealing. Um, we've got some vid links to the videos that we did on this project before and after, so you can go and watch those later on as well. Since that video was made, the permitted development rules for commercial to residential conversion have changed. On August the 1st, 2021, a new set of rules came in, which allowed you to do far more with far more types of commercial properties, which previously you couldn't really do. That really opened things up dramatically. And I really think councils have kind of uh, got a bit scared by the flexibility of these rules and have tried to push back. Now, permitted development is relatively straightforward. The government have set some fixed criteria that you have to follow uh, as a kind of checklist. And if you can tick all those boxes, uh, then you will get your permission. The councils can't deny you that permission. I think what's happening now is that councils are really following those criteria to the letter. And they're making sure you are actually have a firm tick in the box against each one of the criteria that you need to demonstrate uh, to actually get your permitted development. And if there are any areas of grey, uh, shades of grey, uh, then the, the local authorities are more likely uh, not to go with the developer, but simply to reject the application. And that's why it's more important than ever that you know exactly what you can and can't do with permitted development and you get yourself properly educated. Now I'm joined today by two members of my mastermind programme, uh, Sean Harrison and Lal De Silva, uh, and they're going to we're going to talk through this case study of a deal that we're doing right now in Richmond. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Hi Ranjan. Now Lal, you're you are not new to this YouTube channel, are you? <laughs> it's been a while, yes. Um, yeah, good to be back. So your first PD was this deal in Wheatamsted, which was um, a office building to three uh, flats, yes. and we've got. Uh, before and after video of that, and we'll put that in the description below. Go and have a watch of that. That was quite exciting. Um, so tell us a little bit about, I mean, you're both on the Mastermind. You guys met on the Mastermind. How did you guys come together to do this as a joint venture? Um, it, it, it's, it's an organic um, kind of uh, relationship development. We've been on the Mastermind for a, for a year. Um, I had my deal pipeline. Sean, um, he... Um, he lives in, um, um, in Germany. In Germany. Yeah. Um, so we meet up some time to time and then um, we had this chat, uh, the deals uh, in my pipeline. Um, and this deal, a specific deal, was one of them and um, uh, we decided to have a look at it together. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how it all started. I mean, I guess, you know, I think one of the, one of the things, the key things is that, you know, through things like the mastermind, you form the relationship first. And you see that you know you get to know trust like each other, and then deals. That, that, that's deals. exactly right. I mean, fortunately, we had a couple of meetups in person before COVID kicked in, and then then there's a lot on YouTube. But we kept we we, we gelled um, in that time. We kept in touch, and we, we we met up a couple of times afterwards. And um, yeah, that's that we decided we shared a lot of the values in terms of what we we're looking to do. But also in terms of the type of developments we want to do and the, and the sort of quality we want to bring to the market and what we wanted to, you know, we're all along the same lines there. Now this is a fantastic deal because we've got, I mean, it's textbook, it's five minutes walk from the river, you know, we went down there and had a lovely cup of coffee, it's five minutes walk to the, to, to the River Thames um, and it's, it's just a poxy old newsagent shop that no one really wants. But I think the, the key to this is, um, no one really saw this deal. It's 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 open market, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know <clears throat> if it's uh, my fate, but 
uh, I tend to go for troubled properties and that, thus that happened to be the case here. It's, it's a property that couldn't sell, <clears throat> the agent was trying to sell, being on the market um, and then uh, was under off a couple of times, but it was typically marketed for another news agent yes. to come and start another news agency. Yes. Um, it's a dying industry, but um, people were trying to do that and failed to get mortgages and uh, it was not targeted towards developers. I understand why in a way. Um, it's got a lot of um, um, sort of constraints that you need to be educated or, or you need to understand. Um, yes. You know, there's flood zone three, um, uh, you know, article four coming in and then... Well, the big thing was, of course, that um, prior to August the 1st, yes. this part of Richmond is a conservation area. Exactly. So there was no PD that applied. Yeah. So um, the, the, the agents, the selling agents, just assume that this is not a development project. I don't think, yeah, I don't think uh, agents were... The, the P, new PD rules are changing so fast. Yes. Um, I mean, a lot of people couldn't keep up with it, and that's why we're here. We're talking every day, talking to people, talking to, to specialists and trying to learn um, what's coming up. You know, can we be ahead of the... the, the the thing, uh, because most of the agents are, once they get to know it, it's a little late because now it's late, it's you know, in, in a week's time, you know, it'll That's be true. too late. So this is, this is a very um, rare opportunity in Richmond because the London councils are, uh, have been among the first to uh, apply to central government for an Article 4. And Article 4 basically means that the local authority can opt out of PD, permitted development conversions, applying in their backyard uh, and Richmond have done that. Now when they apply for an Article 4 they have to put people on one year's notice before the rules come into effect. So in Richmond the Article 4 that prevented this sort of deal happening came into effect on 4th of July wasn't it? Uh, that's correct yeah. So there was this window of opportunity when the new PD rules came in on August the 1st 2021 and you had until 4th of July 2022 to, to do this um, and I believe this is the only example of a Class MA permitted development application in this street in Richmond because no one else saw this opportunity. I think that's for sure, yeah. yeah. Which, is, which, is, which is incredible and, and because of the, the, the opportunity I'm not sure whether as you said the agents or other people just were on the ball with this. Remember, if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we upload a new video. So what we have here is essentially a um, newsagent building um, where you pretty much were the only buyer that saw development potential. No one else thought there was development potential. Um, that, no, that's right, that knowledge is very important. The possibilities are very important what's there. And, and most people have looked at Lau found it and, and um, and we looked at it and that made sense, yeah. It made sense, because it fit the template of the kind of things that we've talked about in the Mastermind programme and the kind of deals that people have done. So, Sean, what was the development potential that you saw in this property? Well, for a start, there's the area. It's an area that, to be fair, I wasn't too familiar with, but, but Lal knows it very well. Mm -hmm. But what was very good from, it has a rear access to it. There's a, there's a nice alleyway, it runs at the back. And there's an old um, storage unit that had been built on a, on a previous planning permission, which we thought could be knocked down, it would give a very nice garden, which in that part of London, particularly under the sort of um, yeah, the, new, the new world order with people wanting more open space since COVID, it would, would be perfect. There was also on the side of it, there's a lean-to, small lean-to roof, which would have been ideal for getting lighting in um, part of the building for, with, with roof lights. We would then knock out the back wall and put in the, put in the windows, and we'd have a nice 67 worked out 67 square meter flat and still have a very very serviceable shop um, which would be appropriate for the times that we're in now a service industry a service business could go in there it'd be very rentable the rates would be low if anything on there and it just just kind of really made sense it was um really textbook the sort of stuff that we'd seen from ranjan's um mastermind from his teachings and everything it just it just really fitted in it's, it, and that's the thing, I think, it's about seeing these opportunities, having these templates of what's possible, mm -hmm. and then seeing those um, uh, templates in properties that you go along and view that other people aren't seeing. Um, that, that is exactly right. And, and, and Lal had put a lot of, sort of legwork into finding that, and, and 
it, yeah, say it just made sense. I mean, that a lot of people would have missed that. A lot of people wouldn't bother to walk around the back and see that back entrance. But also little things like that lean-to roof, which really made the difference on the lighting issues and, 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 and things like that. And and the potential at storage building, a lot of people would have thought about how can I utilise that? This way we've got the light in there. So it was, yeah, it was a very good, very good find and made sense, yeah. So this was bought off a news agent who's actually trading there. Now, obviously, it has to be vacant for three months before um, you can apply for the permitted development. So what did you guys do on that one? Um, actually, in this case, the news agent was retiring. He couldn't wait to put his feet up. Um, he had this target. Uh, he wanted to retire by Christmas in his head. So uh, he was almost half operating at the time. Um, so long story short, we managed to get a majority of that three months vacancy um, by the time we completed. So we exchanged and um, he had time to uh, pack up. Um, and by the time we completed, nearly three months passed. Yes. I mean, this is what we teach all the time, really. We say exchange contracts because that gives the vendor certainty that the transaction is going ahead. And then try to delay the completion by three to four months. And in that time, use that for your PD, um, uh, either application or vacancy period. Yep. Okay, so the purchase price of this property is? Uh, 415. 415. 415,000 pounds. And roughly we're looking at a 900,000 pounds GDV, um, which, is, which is quite a big uplift, um, about 285K profit. But we'll run through the figures a little bit later. Uh, so, how did you finance it? Well, we are in the right place, aren't we? <laughs> For the right deals, I, I would say. Um, basically, um, we discussed this in the mastermind group, um, as you know, we do. Um, we, we bring up our deals, it's a closed group, we just talk about our deals. Um, where, um, you know, you are interested, um, as, um, because part of your process um, to finance good deals coming into you know, a textbook deals. Um, so that's how we got to finance it. I mean, that's one of the unique things about the Mastermind program. So Kieran's deal that we talked about, we funded that one as well. And this one, because if we teach stuff and it's textbook and it comes up with the figure of 30% return on GDV, and you can see it's relatively clear cut, then why wouldn't we? It'd be nuts not to. Um, so the funding is sorted. Um, the next bit, of course, is putting in the, um, getting the permissions sorted. Um, and it's two phases. There's a bit of planning application because we've got to knock down the storage unit and make the natural light and windows, the windows in the and back. then the PD. Yeah. So the first thing was the planning application, yeah? That's correct. Sean, you want to take that one? That's right. Yeah, so we um, put them for full planning to demolish the storage unit. Um, we wanted to put um, then uh, full length windows, French windows, sliding windows across the back to bring in the light in the back. And also we had the lean-to roof where we were going to put five roof lights in to bring in some natural lighting as well. We wanted to get that planning application in because as a commercial, and this is again something that we, really that we learned, that as a commercial that is going to sail through, there's going to be no objection to that before we put in for the PD because then there won't be an objection on the natural lighting. And that's, um, so, and so that's what we did. And that obviously takes a few weeks. Problem is there that we're a bit against the clock. We've got an Article 4 kicking in. We're now into um, March. We've got Article 4 kicking in the end of July. We want this planning application is going to take about eight weeks to run. And we want it, um, we want the permission there before putting in for the um, for the. So PD. just to, so the viewers understand what's going on here. Under permitted development, you can't change the external envelope of the building. Um, so naturally, windows, doors may not be in the right place in a building that you're converting. So if you want to change the external envelope, you have to do so by a separate planning permission. Now, with each building um, that you're looking to convert, it's not just about whacking in permitted development. It's about, it's about looking at what end outcome that you actually want and devising the perfect strategy for getting there. And that may be through multiple separate planning applications or change of reuses um, and PD applications to get to your end destination. Because if you put it under one application, it's likely to fail. Uh, well, not likely, it will fail. So it's very, very important to have the power team around you to get the advice on the right strategy to get the end outcome. 
That's correct. We, uh, <clears throat> it's very important to us. Uh, we had um, literally only one shot at this. Um, and yes, we had a backup plan. It is still a doomsday scenario. Yes, the, the deal will stack up to, to exit without uh, having any issues. But um, you know, we knew if we execute the right strategy, there is a good chance here and we took that chance. If you like this video, smash that like button. It helps us out on YouTube. It means more people get to see it as well. And of course, we, we had a window of opportunity here with this Article 4, because this is, this is, this is a, if you like, extreme PD. <laughs> Most people won't be coming across this, where they, there's a firm date by which if your application isn't decided, you've lost out. That's it. You've lost out. So it's essential here that we have a plan B mm -hmm. exit. And you described it as a doomsday scenario, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, by it would be a very desirable shop stroke cafe. Uh, we could have potentially gone for full planning, but we are at the mercy of the council so that we, at any cost we want to avoid. Mm -hmm. This is not what we do. Um, so um, in p this particular scenario, um, we did not take any chances. We, um, that's why we went with the right power team. We, we treated it as, as a, you know, we covered every, each and every angle. That was important. Uh, so the, the first planning permission to knock down and build the windows, that was easy, because it's yeah. just for commercial property. Then the permitted development application was in, and you kind of went overboard, didn't you, to make sure that every tick was firmly um, penned in. We did a very, very robust application. We had all the right reports. Um, we had very, very thorough reports. We put a lot of them um, of our own, um, mitig not mitigation, but we were very proactive on, on dealing with some of the issues, particularly on, on, on the flooding side of being by the river. Um, yeah, so again, we wanted to make sure it was a very robust one chance and that, and that was... So by robust, what we're saying is there are checklist criteria by which these permitted development applications are judged, things like natural light and noise and all of that. So rather than saying, yeah, noise is fine or flooding is fine, it's actually getting an expert report to back that up with clear data and recommendations and analysis and all the rest of it. And that is indisputable. That's correct, yeah. And that puts the tick firmly in that box. Yeah, and also preempting anything, as I say, by putting those measures in, by making sure they're all in the reports. Um, at the, at the end of the day, you never really know how it's going to go, but the best you can do is from the learning that you've got is, mm. is to make sure that you get, as Ranjan says, tick all those boxes and, and, leave, and leave no room really for, for, for any objections there. Now, what we are seeing nowadays, quite frankly, from our students is that in the old days, a few years ago, you'd put in a permitted development application and you'd often get it through first time and you'd have to put minimal set of information in to actually get that PD through. Now what we're seeing is that more and more cases get rejected first time because what the council seem to be doing is um, making sure, absolutely sure, you've ticked the criteria. If there's any, any element of doubt, they'll reject. If there's any grey area, they'll side um, not with you, but just reject it. So you have got to make absolutely sure that you uh, have uh, submit a robust application and there are no grey areas. And what we also find is that um, people in planning departments, in planning offices and the like, they're dealing with all sorts of cases. They're dealing with conservatories, they're dealing with porches, household lofts, and they're dealing with the odd PD here and there. They don't necessarily understand all the nuances of, of the rules. And sometimes they get a bit confused between planning permission and PD. Their tendency is to reject, so they just uh, um, over-egg some of the rules, I think, in their favour. So it's now more important than ever that you know what you can push back on and what you can't. Um, because most people get a rejection. I mean, there's another one of our masterminders, who I'm not going to mention is going to be on a different video, he bought an office block, you know, the three and a half million pound yes. one. He bought an office block where the previous owner had got rejected mm -hmm. and given up. But because of his knowledge, he now knows that he can overturn all those objections and go back and win that application. So knowledge is so much power in this. Um, but even though 
our application here was one of the ro most robust I've seen. The council rejected it first time round. Yeah, I think, I think really, to be fair to the council as well, as, as Ranjan alluded to there, there are so many, um, they're, they're dealing with so many other things apart from, from PD, and especially in this, in this um, borough, there's not many people have, have done this type of thing because it was a conservation area. And, and again, their knowledge of, of the rules which have just changed is probably, well, it's certainly nowhere near as thorough as, as, as what we're dealing with, because we're dealing with it every day. And that's, um, that's also the power of, of the mastermind group is that you're talking to other people amongst all this, and it's formed foremost in your mind, which isn't really, to be fair, in a case of, for most case officers who are dealing with it. So, yeah. Just to add to that, um, the, it, it hasn't been rejected. Uh, it's, it's just we had this um, uh, contact from the council yes, previously. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, so, um, basically, we had to um, find out what grounds we, are, uh, we have and, and we, we, we knew these uh, rejections uh, or the, the objections that they're making uh, have no grounds. So uh, when we find that out, we had to prove it in the right way um, to the council uh, to say, no, uh, hold on a minute, that's incorrect. This is um, you know, not according to the planning uh, class MA rules and the guidance, so, which they took on board. You know, so in a way, Class MA is, is new, even for the officers, it seems. They're making certain bits with the grey areas as they go. So we sometimes have to guide them, uh, which in this case they, they have um, taken on board. I mean, to cut a long story short with this one, um, they uh, pushed back a little bit. Yes. Um, and, but this had to be decided before the Article 4 comes into force. Um, so we're not going to go into the details, but a barrister's opinion had to be sought. Uh, that had to be sent to the council, and they eventually decided that, well, okay, perhaps we don't, uh, we're not on solid ground here, we'll, we'll pass this. And you got your decision notice. That's great. And, and, and the council were in respect, there was dialogue with the council and a planning consultant. Um, they were cooperative, and in the end, and they worked to get it over the line as well before the Article 4 kicked in, to be fair, the uh, council. So it wasn't, you know, there was nothing. Um, it, it, it's kind of like just working your way through the rules, wasn't it? So, yeah. so now that that decision has been um, given, uh, basically it's added a huge amount of value to this site. I mean, the purchase price is £415,000 for this news agent shop. And this is a one-stroke, two-bedroom flat with a garden five minutes walk from Richmond. And it's not, you can see on the picture on the screen, it's not accessible from the front. It's accessible from a residential side street, isn't it? Mm. Um, so it, it, the, the, when you actually approach it, it doesn't even feel as though you're, in, um, uh, you're behind commercial premises. So the vibe is very good. So we're looking at about 600, um, 610 or something for the GDV the value of the flat at the back. And um, these sort of small shops that we're retaining, it's about 30 square meters at the front, uh, isn't it? Yes, it's gonna be about 30. Um, so those sort of small shops, they tend to go to service sector businesses. And um, we've, we've, we're, we're looking at a value of about 300,000 pounds based on a 5.5% 5, 5 .5 yield. Yeah, has. that's the steer we had from the agents, local agents. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the trend, we had a, um, one of the reports we have in fact provided to the council was the local agent's report to say that the big shop is not viable for this location, yes. a smaller shop will be more viable, um, and, uh, which, is, which is the truth because um, the trend in the high street, most of the shops are becoming smaller and smaller, yeah. and those shops are, there's no vacancy rates. No, 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 no. That, that shop will sell uh, sorry, we'll rent uh, very, 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 very easily. So based on that GDV, looking at £285,000 um, uh, profit um, and 32% uh, return. Well, the, the idea is to stay around 30%, um, you know, as a, as a guideline, um, which is what, 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 what you know, and, um, you know, to, to in a location like this, and uh, it's quite local to, to where I live, um, which I really love to work on, uh, you know, these local areas, and um, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, this is the thing that I find really, I mean, I, as you know, I do Property Elevator, and we see loads of deals pitched on there, and some people pitch deals which are really complicated. Um, 
you know, they're building 30 flats or something and a lot of risk and they're going to take three years to do and this, that and the other. And, they, and, and the margin's 20%, you know. And when you're doing, if you've got a 20% margin and the deal's going to take three years, that's really 20% divided by three years. So the return's not that great. With these sort of deals, the in and out time is going to be about a year. We hope so, yes. Yeah. And, and that's a unique one of flat and uh, the agent, local agents told us uh, there are enough one beds, but there's not enough with outside space, of course. which will add a premium to <laughs> such a location. Yeah. So we, we're trying to work with all, everyone. So we really hope, uh, and this is going to be a lovely flat, and um, which will be um, you know snapped up. No, it, it certainly it certainly will. I mean, in this location, this type of spec, and particularly as it doesn't look as though it's part of a commercial, it'll it'll be uh, it'll be very very good. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that this is 32 percent on. On, on uh, this is what we find is, is, is un, I mean people get very excited if they say hey I'm making 12 flats out of a office or building six new build houses in a field or something you know but this deal doesn't look that sexy to most people look at it it's just a you know news agent buying a flat in the back and a shop at the front but it's 32 percent 285 grand and you're in and out in a year that's, cr that's correct, and that's one of the things we sat down and, and when we originally talked about this and we had a, a first meeting about this, we looked at it, it's just, it seems like a small project, is it big enough for two people? Then we worked the numbers out and, and it's, yeah, it's, it, it works yeah, for the well, time and yeah. uh, afford. To be honest, and, and another thing I would add, um, you know, working with right people on, on working together, JVs, um, it just puts your mind off a lot of things because we can uh, leverage more two people are working you Absolutely. can share your workload mm -hmm. and um, you, you have the synergy and you can um, you can do more deals um, at the same time um, so I think it's an ideal scenario to work with the right people and it's there. JVs it's also the power team and being plugged into the right power team so that because it, with permitted development you will encounter hurdles and blockages mm -hmm. but who do you pick up the phone to to overcome them um, and it's knowing which person to pick up the phone to for the right hurdle to get you through it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, having the right power team and also, um, I must say, just, um, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's your team and, and you are the decision maker. The, you know, they are paid regardless um, for their work, but we are the ones who are taking the bigger risk. So we must manage that power team and make the right decisions at the right time. Absolutely. That is that is where you, your education and your knowledge comes in. You need to be, um, you know, uh, educated in various areas. Let it be flood, uh, you know, daylight, and uh, um, all sorts, and um, you know, planning consultants, um, you know, various areas. But you need to be able to make those decisions. You are the only one. You you, you are the the, the you need to captain to of the board, basically. Exactly. You need to be able to lead your party. That's 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 and, that's uh, a little be the conductor of the orchestra, that's rather than play the individual instrument. That's correct. We'll keep you posted how this deal goes. If you're interested in finding out more about joining the mastermind group, the mastermind commercial mastermind group uh, focuses entirely on doing commercial property, commercial property investment, commercial property investment for a pension and also commercial to residential conversion opportunities. Uh, you can find out more at this link below, succeedingproperty.com forward slash mastermind and apply to join. So what next for you guys then? Are you looking at doing more deals together? What sort of projects are you, you eyeing up uh, next? Good thing we, you, you ask me, we may need um, some more funding. <laughs> no, That's good. That's just, good. Um, no we, we, we are looking at several deals um, and um, we, we quite like uh, to work tight in the local area for the next few deals. And just like you said, keep it simple. Um, just uh, apply the template um, several times um, you know, before we move on to the, the next level. Um, and, and you know, if you have this level of deals, several of those happening, I think we, we, we think it's, it's the way to go, at least for us, uh, for the next, um, uh, you know, uh, few deals. So, certainly, at the moment, keep that momentum going and, and nice, simple deals, but deals that you, that you, you understand and, and where the, the risk level is very, very low, there's a good upside and very little downside and that's, you know, that's what Absolutely. we're... Absolutely. And I think the risk level is obviously managed through knowledge. Yeah. That uh, th 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 that's right. Having a good exit, if it, if it doesn't, if your plan A or your plan B doesn't work out, that's very, very important. 
Um, yeah, and that's our plan. We're going to be looking for more of those deals. We've got a couple that we're looking at now. So, um, yeah. So we talked so, about those over lunch afterwards. So, so, so far, so good. So, yeah. So before we uh, head out for a bit of lunch and all of that, I mean, Sean, um, what sort of tips would you share with people watching this who are thinking, oh, they want to get into commercial to residential conversion? Well, I think um, the learning is, a lot of learning for me has been that you don't really, you're not never really certain of the outcome, but if you've got the right knowledge behind you, um, you're going to be able to work around it, you're going to be able to, to, to mitigate anything that comes that way. And I think it's very, very important to, to have that knowledge and, and to be very selective, there's, a lot of, there's an awful lot of stuff out there. There's, there's a lot of training courses and things. But you've got to really know what it is that you're looking for. And commercial residential really fits the box for me because, um, because it's very easy to manage. You can, you can do projects and move on. You can hold and keep the elements. Again, it's, 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 it's um, knowing what you want to do and what your, your end goal is, but getting that getting that knowledge and, and that background and, and meeting the right people. That's, that's absolutely, yeah. Well, what are your tips? Um, I can tips. give you, uh, I mean, the main things, keep it simple. And uh, in the in, in, um, last couple of deals that I've been discussing with you and, and you know, um, uh, going through with you, they were deals that out there for anyone to see and uh, they were not like off market someone just you know direct to win then that is great great strategies to to do yes i don't you know uh, disagree but you know if you want to get started there are enough deals out there be look look close be educated look close and uh, most likely you'll find there are angles that um, a lot of people haven't haven't seen and and that's where your you know your, your deal is and you know look at this deal and it's just it's been there it's out there it didn't sell and um, we managed to make something out of it i like that one actually that's very very true I mean, you know you don't have to be complicated about deal sourcing a lot of people try to get very very complicated and yeah. about getting off markets and and all of this you don't have to find all that you just have to know how to see stuff that other people aren't seeing and then you look in the open market Exactly. There will be lots of deals out there. I'm not saying, yes, we, we, we kiss a lot of frogs, but it means that, you know, sometimes you look at a property and you might say, oh, I'm disappointed, you know, I, I just, um, I, I thought it's something else. Versus sometimes you go there and say, oh, wow, I, th this is now getting interesting because I came, I'm glad I came to see it because, oh, I see this, the agent didn't present it. In, in this scenario, we did not know there were, uh, we can put roof lights on the side. We went, you were there, we went, we went had a look and said, oh, wow, we could get a roof light. That means there could be another study slash yes, yes, room out yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. That kind of scenario. That's a nice little bonus because the agent didn't have that on the floor plan. We know and, that happens uh, many times. Yes. The presentation can be deceiving. Yeah. So go, do your due diligence, get educated, and um, you, know, you will find your deal. You will find your deal, particularly if you get educated. If you're not already a subscriber to this YouTube channel, make sure you do so, hit the bell icon. We'll be following up on this project once it's built out as well. And also, if you're serious about commercial property, uh, you really want to join the Commercial Property Mastermind Programme, I'll leave a link to how, details on how to apply uh, in the description below. Thanks, Thanks very much, Sean. And Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys in the next video. High streets across the land are changing forever. Basically, there's an oversupply of retail premises. Shops are closing down, more are gonna close down in the future. The government know this, and that's why they've introduced, or they're introducing a light touch planning system, which allows small developers to easily repurpose these buildings to residential use under a light touch planning regime called permitted development. Now, this is going to be the biggest revolution uh, and the biggest change and the biggest opportunity for property investors um, that I've ever seen and this is all coming into effect on 1st of August so you need to know what's happening and what properties to look for to take advantage of these opportunities so that you can get in there and take that first mover advantage. I've got a 90 minute free masterclass to get you ready for August the 1st. Make sure you join me, click the link below. Whether you're a beginner or expert, we'll get you started.